In this video, we'll be looking at the best mods of the year through each category. Let's not waste any time and get into the best animation mods of the year. We're first going to look at Sky Climb, which isn't just about adding new animations. Sky Climb introduces a true climbing mechanic into Skyrim. Using the animations from EVG Traversal, Sky Climb allows players to climb almost anything. As you approach any wall or cliff with a reachable ledge, you can watch for a blue indicator signaling that it's climbable, and then all you need to do is press the jump button and then you're climbing. You can now truly climb to the top of that mountain, and it opens up new strategies for gameplay. Imagine being a sneak thief scaling buildings to evade guards, or traversing over boulders and cliffs whilst you're out adventuring. All in all, Sky Climb is a fantastic mod that just makes exploring in Skyrim that much more enjoyable. Next we'll look at a mod that's a rarity in both its scope and ambition, the comprehensive first person animation overhaul. This mod is a colossal upgrade to Skyrim's first person view, as it adds over a thousand new animations, completely overhauling the vanilla ones. What makes this mod stand out is its attention to detail. It doesn't just replace the animations, it adds unique ones depending on your weapon type. So axes will be swung in a chopping motion, maces and hammers will be swung downwards and look like they have more weight behind the swings, and daggers will no longer be used like swords but will stab and jab at the target, which is obviously far more immersive. Each school of magic now gets unique casting animations as well with the destruction spells looking like they're being actively thrown at the target, versus the restoration spells looking more controlled and subdued. Conjuration magic is cast as if you're raising the creature with your spell, and for healing spells you now bring them in close to your chest. The sheer variety this mod adds can't be found anywhere else on the Nexus, so it's definitely worth checking out. Now for the best combat changing mod of the year, we'll look at Lawless. This is a comprehensive overhaul that targets bandits in both Skyrim and Solstheim, bringing way more diversity and challenge to your encounters. What sets with all this apart from the other bandit overhauls is its introduction of 13 new bandit archetypes, each inspired by previous Elder Scrolls games. And these aren't just reskins or simple stat boosts. Each archetype comes with unique strengths, weaknesses and combat strategies, creating a varied and dynamic combat experience. In the vanilla game, bandit progression is somewhat linear and limited, with only 6 tiers of bandits. The highest level bandit you can encounter caps at level 25 for normal bandits, and only level 28 for bosses. Lawless shatters the ceiling, enabling bandits to continuously scale with the player's level. This ensures that bandits remain a consistent threat throughout your adventure, rather than just a mere inconvenience on the road. The mod doesn't stop at leveling either, it overhauls the bandit's stats and perks to align with their new roles. Each type of bandit under Lawless is carefully crafted to offer a unique challenge. So let's look at some of the new bandit archetypes that Lawless introduces. Take for example the Monk. These bandits have honed their bodies into a deadly weapon, using only their fists supplemented with alteration magic to take down their foes. Another addition is the Spell Sword archetype. These bandits blend melee combat with spell casting, particularly at selling and conjuration magic, which allows them to summon bound weapons, which is a combat style that just wasn't present in the vanilla game. And next we have a really quick sponsored segment to talk about some free stuff you can get. Game of Thups is an actually tasty energy drink that's under one calorie and with zero sugar. Out of all the flavours I've tried, I especially like just the plain blue flavour. And if you're watching this video within the first 24 hours of me uploading it, you can get some sample packs for completely free, delivered straight to your door if you use my code REDSHIFT. So you really don't have any reason not to try it. And after the 24 hour window ends, you can use my code REDSHIFT to get 10% off everything on the GamerSupps website. Again, you can try it completely for free using my code without even having to put in your payment info. So it's a good idea to just pick up some sample packs to try. Anyways, let's get back to it with the best quests of the year. First, let's dive into Siren Root. Now this one is truly fantastic, so I'll try not to spoil anything. But the adventure itself ranges between 2 to 5 hours, with multiple endings and a wealth of player dialogue options. To start the quest, you'll have to seek Frissa Blackbriar in Elgrim's Elixirs, as she can point you in the right direction. What makes Siren Root truly stand out is its design. With an emphasis on verticality, the dungeon challenges players with platforming elements using EVG Traversal, as well as puzzles throughout your adventure. The voice acting in Siren Root is another highlight, featuring about a thousand lines of dialogue performed by a talented cast. Mostly as a stand-in when Elgrim isn't teaching Ingen. Otherwise, protection. Which helps to bring far more depth and personality to these unique NPCs. Speaking of which, these characters are not just there for the quest. They have their own defined personalities and backgrounds, reacting dynamically to your choice of words. And the stakes are quite high in the quest, as these NPCs can live and die based on your decisions. Visually speaking, the mod is stunning. The lead NPCs have hand sculpted faces, unique skin and hair, as well as unique outfits and even animations. And to fully experience the mod, you'll need to turn up the in-game music to enjoy the 14-track original soundtrack, which is also the music playing in the background you're hearing now. There's not much more I can say and show you without giving away too much, 
so I'd highly recommend you play through this quest yourself. For another fantastic quest mod, we have the Skyrim Extended Cut Saints and Seducers. Now I'm cheating a little bit as this was released in November last year, but it's a complete overhaul and expansion of the official Saints and Seducers creation. This mod takes players on a fantastic high quality adventure back to the Shivering Isles from Oblivion. The new region of the Realm of Madness, the Asylum, is a beautifully crafted world space filled with new characters, weather, flora and fauna, which is split into two sections, being both mania and dementia. To actually start the new quest, you have to have completed Mind of Madness and be at least level 20. Once you've reached those requirements in your next visit to Solitude, you'll be put on a series of events that will eventually lead you to the asylum. The total playtime could range from 1 to 3 hours, depending on your exploration and engagement with the side content. But the journey doesn't end once the main story is completed. The asylum remains open for return visits, allowing you to explore its three new dungeons, shop at two new stores, and discover countless secrets and treasures. The mod obviously integrates all the new assets and content from Saints and Seducers, including item sets like the Amber Armor and the Madness Gear, as well as artifacts like Nerve Shatter. And optionally, during installation, you can seamlessly integrate creations like Shadowrend, Ruin's Edge, and the Staff of Shergorath. The new environment helps to bridge the gap between Oblivion and Skyrim creating a nostalgic yet fresh experience. Moving on to creature mods, this year has brought us some exceptional additions. First we're going to look at the Falmer overhaul. This mod breathes new life into one of Skyrim's most fearsome creatures, being the Falmer. The overhaul doesn't just tweak, but completely transforms the Falmer models and textures, which results in a far more realistic looking and visually striking representation of these underground dwellers. For the other creature mod, we have the Flame Atronarch. This mod simply makes the Daedric creatures far more sleek, which I think aligns them more closely with modern graphic standards. For the best of immersion, we have two standout mods. First, we're going to look at the Immersive Death Cycle mod. This mod transforms the way death is represented in Skyrim. So now when you slay an animal or come across the corpse of one, with this mod, the creature doesn't remain unchanging. Instead, a realistic process of decay begins. In just four hours, the body starts to show signs of being half eaten, half decayed. And fast forward to 12 hours later, and you'll only find bones left behind. For necromancers, this one has a slight eerie twist, as raised creatures now it's a bit half eaten, half rotten appearance. This mod also ensures diversity and decay, with up to six different models per animal, enhancing the realism of each encounter. Another thoughtful aspect is how this mod handles animals that start dead in game. These animals also follow the natural decay process, indicating their time of death, which I think helps to add more depth to the game world. Moreover, the cycle of decay isn't just visual. Adventurers and alchemists can harvest bone meal and other ingredients from the remains, which actually makes the mod quite practical. Next we'll look at the improved camera mod. This mod revolutionizes the first person experience in Skyrim. It finally gives Skyrim a first person body and extends the first person view to various activities that would previously force you into third person, like crafting, horse riding, and transforming into a werewolf or vampire lord. This mod even includes a custom UI to configure your camera settings as well as your FOV. What's more is that improved camera is fully compatible with animation mods like the comprehensive first person animation overhaul that we covered earlier. Now for the best UI mod of the year, it has to be Wheeler. Wheeler offers a quick action menu that elegantly embeds itself into the game. The inspiration behind Wheeler comes from modern RPGs like The Witcher 3 that has a wheel to enable quick switching between magic signs and consumables. Wheeler brings this UI paradigm into Skyrim, aiming to streamline the gameplay experience especially for controller users. Wheeler is essentially a better favourites menu. So here's how the mod actually works. Once you're in your inventory, you can hover over whatever item you want to add to your wheel and then press the wheeler hotkey. From here, you can left click on whatever slot you want to place the item. You can create more slots by clicking the M key by default and you can have multiple wheels at one time. You can have one for your potions and one for your weapons at the same time. For the NPC overhauls, there are two mods that really stand out. Let's start with the most downloaded this year being Debella's Blessing. This comprehensive appearance overhaul touches on every unique female NPC in Skyrim. That's 233 characters. From Mjol the Lioness and Riften, to Orfina Greymane and Whiterun, and even minor characters like Froki the Barmaid and Markarth. What obviously sets this mod apart is its unique style. Each character receives a distinct makeover, featuring new hairstyles, unique textures for the skin and eyes, and even customizable elements like Ayla's war paint and Jarl Elisif's hairstyle. But now onto my personal favourite of this year, there's the high poly true to vanilla NPC overhaul. This mod takes a different approach, focusing on staying true to the original vanilla theme whilst elevating NPC appearances. It's not about creating something entirely new, but enhancing what's already there, preserving the original essence of each character. The mod also incorporates new beard styles from the Beards of Power mod, adding them to select NPCs in a lore-friendly manner. The mod may not be as transformative as Isabella's Blessing, but its strength lies in its subtlety and respect for the original game's design. 
Both mods serve different purposes for enhancing NPC appearances in Skyrim. The Bella's Blessing is for players looking for a more unique and fresh overhaul, whilst High Poly True to Vanilla NPC Overhaul is perfect for those of you who prefer a more faithful upgrade to the vanilla experience. Now for the most downloaded texture mod of the year, we have the Omnibus. This mod is a comprehensive collection of all the terrain parallax textures created by the talented Mysterious Dawn compiled into one convenient download. For those unfamiliar, parallax textures create a 3D effect which adds depth to surfaces. The Omnibus covers a wide range of natural terrains including snow, dirt and sand. Each texture features realistic colours and details that truly bring a next generation look to Skyrim's environment. Moving on to the EMB, we have the most downloaded and my personal favourite of the year, being Rudy EMB for Natural Atmospheric Tamriel. This EMB is nothing short of breathtaking. It enhances Skyrim skies from the radiant blue of clear days to the gloomy overcast of stormy weather. It also has unique weather types like ash and embers raining in Solstheim, which adds a dramatic flair to the game. Pairing this EMB with Lux results in the best interior lighting available on the Nexus. It strikes a perfect balance between fantastical and realistic, elevating the visual experience of Skyrim to new heights. Lastly for the textures, I just couldn't overlook JS Unique Utopia Rings. This model is a complete overhaul of Skyrim's unique rings, available in 1K, 2K and even 4K textures. These are of a ridiculous quality and made the old rings look like they belong in a PS2 game. And by covering the unique rings, it doesn't just mean rings like Hercene's ring from the quest Ilmet by Moonlight or the Bonehawk ring from the Dawnguard DLC, but all the uniquely named rings that previously lacked a unique model, like the Ring of Pure Mixtures, which is now adorned with a Mortar and Pestle, or the Silverblood Family Ring, which are given at the end of No One Escapes Sidna Mine, as well as Modesti's Silver Ring, which is still to join the Thieves Guild. Now for the most downloaded and the best armor of the year, we have Azura's Guard. This isn't just a simple armor mod, it's a highly adaptable set designed specifically for female characters. The real magic of Azura's Guard lies in its versatility. You can combine 15 minor pieces to make up the full cuirass, or you can keep them separate so you can mix and match them and take out parts as you see fit. There are two ways to acquire this stunning armor, adventurers can journey to Hag's End through Deepwood Readout to find the set. Alternatively, crafters can find the manual near the Gloombound Mine entrance, allowing them to forge the armor themselves. The armor also has the ability to morph, which has another layer of customization, as it enables you to transform the heels into sabatons, or modify the mast helmet into an open face version. It's a beautiful armor set that offers an unparalleled level of personalization. I also have to give an honorable mention to Fourth Unknown's armors, which I covered in an earlier video. These mods are a collection of some of the finest armor designs available in the Nexus, suitable for a wide range of character builds and styles, and obviously of outstanding quality. Though speaking of Fourth Unknown, for one of the best weapons of the year, we'll start with Debaser. This is a short sword that periodically glows blue, illuminated by magical markings. To obtain the weapon, you have to visit Falkyrie Cemetery, where you may find a serial grave robber carrying the blade. Moving on to another of the best weapons of the year, we have Fettered Fragments. This mod takes weapon design to a whole new level, as this extremely unique weapon consists of a series of daisy chain floating fragments, morphing into a shape of a scythe or whip. As you swing, block or move with these weapons, all the pieces will sway and move dynamically. To obtain either the scythe or whip added by fettered fragments, you will need to craft them out of broken weapon pieces that can be found in miscellaneous loot as well as in merchant stocks. Once you've got the pieces and mastered the arcane smithing perk, you can access the crafting recipes from a cooking pot. These weapons can also be enchanted and tempered, making these weapons not only visually unique but also quite powerful. There's also more to the mod. You can craft elemental bound variants of the weapons by adding certain magical elements during crafting to unlock their spell terms. Each ingredient you add corresponds to a different elemental power. For example, crafting with fire salts produces the ember spell term, while adding a black soul gem creates the spectral version spell term. These bound variants of the weapons deal pure magic damage and each are tailored to be highly effective against certain foes or highly ineffective against others, depending on their resistances or immunities. The Carmine variant can absorb the health from the living but has no effect on dwarven automations. The Ember version simply burns the target. Mending absorbs health for the wielder from the undead and summoned entities, though it's harmless to the living as well as dwarven automations. Sleep freezes and wears down targets. Discharge tasers and depletes a target's magicka. Spectral inflicts inert magic damage and is capable of soul trapping. And the last variant, Verdure, poisons the target into a frenzied state while slowly corroding their health. Well that's everything for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to endorse the mod you enjoy.